The sun is out here at Sebring Expo 2013. So we're looking at an airplane we haven't seen before. It's not brand new, but we haven't examined it closely. And we've got Galen Geigley to tell us a little bit about the Parachute Airwolf. And I'm telling you, I'm sitting in the back seat here and I could go eat a lot of hamburgers and still fit in this seat. This is enormous. What else is different about this aircraft for us, Galen? Well, this is the Airwolf model. We use the 100 horsepower 912 ULS. Payload capacity is 760 pounds, so yes, you payload. can continue to eat. Whoa. <laughs> now, we're not talking empty weight here, we're talking payload, what you can carry in the aircraft. That's one of the highest numbers I know of in the entire LSA space. It's like a Cessna 172, basically. <laughs> That's fantastic. Tell us the number again. So we've got 760 a pounds. 760 pounds of payload. Yes. The, stuff the aircraft carry itself with weighs 475. Five pounds. Wow, that's, uh, that's like 1.4 times its empty weight or some number like that. Very impressive. Okay, continue on, please. I just had to stop you with that one. No problem. So, yeah, this is our the top of the line model that we produce. You know, we produce the 582 version, which is the 65 horse. This is a four stroke. So, fuel burn, four and a half gallons an hour, 15 gallons of fuel. So, you fly for quite a while. It's, now I'm looking at the control mechanisms. Of course, power parachutes are steered by pulling down the trailing edge of the canopy overhead. So that's how you steer them. There's not a joystick or a yoke in that conventional sense. But I'm in the rear seat here where an instructor might sit. And I do have a throttle over here, I see, which is a that's your go up, go down lever, basically, in a powered parachute. Correct. But do I have any steering capability back They're here? They're off right now, but yeah, we have the steering that links to the front here. This so is you your can rudder add, pedal. you're adding a part that's not on this aircraft to do that? Yep. Okay. Yep. And then I could, if I was an instructor, I'd probably yep. be something like this. Is that yep. about it? Correct. Okay, but meanwhile, you're steering with your feet here, so you want to go left, you push with your push left your foot left. on that bar. And it which pulls then down pulls on down. the back of the wing. So Now, the camera can't see it here, but I'm looking down at this uh, clamping mechanism right here, and it says trim lock. Yep. I'm not familiar with that on a powered parachute, which I've had the like pleasure to fly a few of. Yeah, yeah, What's that doing like for us, Galen? So if we have right, a crosswind and we got a long distance to fly, instead Reba, of holding your foot out to aircraft. grab into the wind, <laughs> what you do they is just pull in on the line, and then the craft will crab into the wind. It's beautiful. So it's literally a trim, just like a three-axis aircraft has a trim, which, which does exactly the same kind of thing, except without affecting the trailing edge of the wing. Yep. Excellent. And so over here, you've got you've got levers on both sides now. The camera can't see over to your right. But on the right, there is a, a throttle and choke levers, I see, and of course a trim lock. Correct. So this is your power. This is basically your elevator. More power you climb, less power you descend. And the choke is for starting it. And so as Galen was moving that one, and I'll bet you it works both ways, that lever is moving. Here's the throttle in the back. And then one, the one to the right there is just a choke what you use during starting process startup. on these aircraft. Correct. And the trim on this side as well, then, yep. so you could trim it either so you way. you got full digital engine information system, which we use the EIS made by Grand Rapids. So it's got your full display there. All your engine vitals, your rate of climb, altimeter, everything built in. Now one thing you don't need on this aircraft is you don't need an airspeed indicator particularly. And why is that, Galen? Uh, these are stall resistant, so basically the wing is set up so when you get slow it's just going to descend. So if you killed the engine, you're simply going to descend. The only way the chute would be able to stall is if you continued to pull line in and create drag to pull it back. So it's, you can't stall them. And so basically everything happens at about the same speed. You Correct. take off, you cruise, you land at a set basically a kind of a set speed which is uh, adjusted by the initial rigging of the canopy to Correct. the airframe Correct. or to the carriage. So you're doing what, 25, 30 miles an hour? This one cruises at 36, 37 miles an hour. What kind of climb rate would you get out of the 912 miles? This one, the climb rate can be anywhere from uh, 750 to 1250 feet per minute based on your payload. Based on the loading. So if you get it all the way up to that big number we talked about earlier, you're going to have yeah, the lower Yeah, if you're fully climb loaded, rate. you'll be still 700 feet per minute climb rate. And that's because you got this 100 horsepower engine yeah. getting the boost on it. Yep. So how is this airplane available to the market? Like, uh, we have dealers all over the United States, but basically if you went to our website, which is www.powerofshoot.com, there's a dealer link on there. 
click on your state, find who your closest dealer is, or contact us. We can put you in touch with your closest dealer. They sell you the plane. They train you. They're all CFIs. So. But also, let's talk about the ways you can buy the aircraft. That's who you buy it from, but yep. the ways you can buy it. This aircraft we're looking at right here is an SLSA. That stands for Special Light Sport Aircraft, meaning you can get it all ready to go. Yep. Now, you're going to give them some training with it because everybody does, and that's great. But they can get it without having to tighten one bolt. Right. But there are options for that, are there not? Tell there, us about those games. You can also get the ELSA package. So the ELSA, it's the kit built. So it's experimental, light sport, and you can do a lot more, it's a lot more freedom as far as maintenance and stuff. You can go get your two-day course and do all your own maintenance. Um, the experimental pretty much comes 95% complete from the factory also. Um, so that's mostly for somebody who wants to have a little familiarity with how certain parts of the correct. aircraft may be assembled and to have a little pride of ownership and pride of building uh, built in, but they don't really have to do a great deal of work. Correct. Are you also building an ultralight? We do the ultralight version. We have uh, the Voyager and the Sky Rascal. So unfortunately, the Rotax discontinued the 447 and the 503, so we don't have those engines available on the ultralight versions. So we're using the MZ series engines right now. Okay. Maybe some other options there, but for the 103 interested people, there are options here. And I know they have quite modest prices. Now, talking about that, if you go look at some of these really high-end uh, LSA out here, you can spend uh, quite a bit of money if you like. You may be getting a great deal. We're not saying that, but you are going to spend more money. What is something, here's your top of the line. Now, what does this one sell for in rough terms? We don't need exact numbers. So our top of the line is going to be anywhere from thirty-five to 40000 depending on how you equip it, but 40000 being the top, top, top. So what, we're, what I'm sitting in here right now, this 30, shiny, beautiful thing, you've always done some really nice yeah. hardware work on these This airplanes. one's like 38000 So less than $40,000, a fully ready-to-fly aircraft with all the bells and whistles you could want on a powered parachute. And you know what, there are people that say, well, but they're so limited in flying. Well. Any sport aircraft is, you don't fly it in really lousy weather because what would be the point? So yes, you fly, you find the right time of day, the right kind of weather to fly these aircraft. But I'm telling you, there is about no better visual platform that I've ever flown in than a powered, a powered parachute like this power chute. I mean, I can see the world here and the wing is so far above me, it's not even in the way. So pretty remarkable aircraft. $40,000 or less, how can you miss with that? And I believe it's all American made. All made in America. That Michigan is where we're based out of. So a website where we can come and get some more information, Galen. So it'd be www.soaringconceptsaerospace.com. Okay, we'll put that on the screen for you as well. Talking to Galen Geigley, and I got it right this time, <laughs> uh, here at uh, Sebring Expo. And thanks so much for watching us today. My name is Dan Johnson. I've got information about gyros, about powered parachutes, Power Shoot the company on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.